there, everybody. Karen Roby here with Hastings Vigo for Tech Republic talking today about the top five programming languages that system admins uh, need to learn. Hey, Seuss, great article here. I know we've gotten uh, a, a lot of response, people really interested in uh, you know, what they need to know. So what'd you find here? So um, I, I approached this article from my own background as a system admin for many years. Um, and, you know, especially now in the times that we're living in, you know, a lot of remote work and just uh, people wearing a lot of different hats. I know I certainly am. So one of the things that I found that has helped me uh, in the past few years, and especially now, is um, definitely some kind of programming or automation language, right? I mean, uh, since we can't really be everywhere at the same time, we're finding that we have to leverage the technologies to make our life easier. Um, so with this, I found... Um, kind of a list that, again, this applies more so to system admins. And I looked at it as kind of like a dual prong. One is to help you with what you're going through right now, your current workload, et cetera. Um, but then the second part on the back end is the languages that would help you maybe transition. Uh, there's a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of companies that are closing, uh, you know, employees are getting laid off. So having those extra skill sets uh, might help you, might be the difference between getting the next job or maybe even getting a better job. Um, so I, feel, I found that these languages are going to help you as a system admin kind of work with your existing background to best, uh, I guess, put you in the position to, uh, to move forward if you, know, if you need to. Yeah, very good. And it's, you know, this, as you said, now, now's the time. I mean, there, there's for, for so many reasons because of our current situation and the uncertainty of, of what's to come. So, um, you know, just talk a little bit about those particular languages and what you found on each there. So the first one on the list, uh, it should, you know, it's, it's a really popular language for, for many uh, facets. It's Python. So uh, Python is actually used, um, I mean, so many different platforms use it from IoT, system administration, uh, to, you know, different types of automation, DevOps. Um, so what I tried to, to do is, as I wrote uh, out the different categories, I looked at the languages and then where they might best be suited as far as like roles moving forward. Um, penetration testers as far as security, that's a huge, huge boom uh, for all those types of admins that are working with, um, you know, any kind of, uh, at any security capacity, especially, like I said, penetration testing, checking out networks, things like that. A lot of these tools help to automate um, much of the testing that goes on instead of, you know, relying on certain applications and things like that to kind of fill in the gaps. You can have these scripts effectively that leverage all of these technologies into one uh, makes the person's job easier and it also gives you kind of feedback from one point of view uh, like a central point of view um, moving down the list we have uh, bash scripting uh, which is basically the uh, command line interpreter for uh, linux and mac os um, linux is relatively low on the market share compared to the competitors of windows and, and uh, mac os but at the same time it's used in so many commercial applications from um, server-based systems, uh, I mean, you name it, web, uh, websites, web hosting, application development. So Bash is really a, a really good tool for anyone that, especially anyone that has to deal with uh, Mac or, or Linux systems uh, to kind of get under your belt. Uh, it certainly makes the job of managing these devices a lot more efficient, a lot quicker. Um, and, you know, again, it can be kind of pivoted into other roles um, that might, you know, benefit from having this kind of skill set. Um, and similarly, uh, the next one on the list is PowerShell, which is like the Microsoft equivalent, uh, which, you know, uh, about a year ago went open source. So it's now, it can be found on Linux and Mac OS systems, but it's still the predominant uh, way of managing uh, Windows-based systems. So any system administrator that is looking to, I guess, maybe maximize their their output at their job, uh, kind of simplifying certain things or even repetitive roles, they can just kind of offset that to a PowerShell script or, or the PowerShell language. Um, they're gonna find that their job is gonna be infinitely easier. Um, and then of course, that also adds a certain pathway to like Mac OS and, and Linux systems, which now, like I said, they're open source. So you can kind of see some blending between what you do in the Windows side with those other two operating systems. Um, Let's see, down we have Ruby. So Ruby is a programming language that's, uh, it, it's more so suited for like web development 
and application development. Um, a lot of times you're gonna find that it's got a very strong foothold in e-commerce, even though of all the different languages on the list, that one probably has the least amount of market share. Um, so you might not find as many roles or positions in that field, but the cool thing about when you specialize is that there may be less positions, but usually those fewer positions are in such high demand that they usually carry with it a larger um, salary base. So, or other kinds of bonuses. So if that's something that you're looking for, you know, that might be a really good way to, to kind of move forward. Um, especially when it comes to the security field, a lot of uh, information security professionals use it to test applications uh, while fuzzing. Um, they end up using it for their scripts uh, during penetration testing. Um, they are heavily used for uh, application development, like I mentioned before, especially in the mobile space. Uh, a lot of the apps that we have um, kind of start off as Ruby applications and they kind of port them over as needed to the different platforms. Um, so if that's something that you are interested in or you see that maybe it would be a good avenue for you, Ruby would be a pretty good way to, to get involved in not only applying that to your day-to-day, -day, but then also moving forward into, you know, where you're looking to be. Um, and then the last one on the list is JavaScript. And JavaScript, I would say out of all the languages, has been around the longest, probably. Um, the main benefit to JavaScript, I would say, or not so much the benefit, but the, the main application for it is in web development. Um, a lot of websites, applications, uh, especially um, services that we have come to rely on that have moved from an app on your on your phone or on your computer to like a browser that you log into uh, to get it that way. So a lot of these kinds of um, kind of applications are what JavaScript is really known for, you know, being it's like a strong point, strong suit. Um, basically, when you look at JavaScript, there's less of a, okay, there's less a cross pollination between a current system admin job and JavaScript. There is some, but um, there's also so many facets to where you can take JavaScript that it's almost like one of those uh, types of um, programming languages that they may not benefit you almost immediately, but in the future, your possibilities open up, your potentials open up that much more. And um, as far as like we mentioned, similar to Ruby, we have like uh, mobile device development, um, game development, that's also a really big one too, because you know JavaScript exists on every platform and it's supported the same way. So whatever you develop for JavaScript can be easily ported over to an iOS device or an Android device and just as easily get it up and running. Uh, a lot of times that code is very portable, uh, which is actually a really good feature, I think, for, for sysadmins and you know, uh, developers alike. Yeah, so, such important uh, information there, Jesus. And I know you know, as you mentioned, from you know firsthand experience, this is the world that you live in every day. Uh, you know, be, because besides writing and researching for Tech Republic and other, you are out. Uh, you know, this is what you do every day. And and like you mentioned, you're wearing different hats right now, and it's an uncertain time. So it's so important to have uh, you know this this knowledge base or upskill to where you you can be more resourceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You never know. Um, I mean, we never really know where life is going to take us. I mean, obviously, current events uh, have yep. pointed that out. And, um, you know, like I said, it, the, the angle for this was, was two-pronged. You know, we definitely want to see how it can benefit us right now. And especially that um, many of us that are working from home, uh, myself included, um, I am busy, but at the same time, I do find myself having pockets of downtime. And, you know, I've been kind of facilitating that downtime with actually, you know, taking on new skill sets, learning. I'm trying to learn Python myself, uh, you know, more extensively. Um, you know, it's things like that, that mm -hmm. they really kind of form the crux of helping us do what we do now. Kind of, I've always termed it as a working smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, if the unexpected happens, you know, you have a couple of more marks on your resume that might help make the difference between, you know, moving in one direction or another. Absolutely. And like you said, sometimes moving into a better direction or, you know, more, uh, more lucrative position yep. too. You just, you don't know where to lead you. Uh, all right. Hey, Sue, some great information there again. And uh, for all you guys watching uh, that article there on the top five programming language that system admins uh, need to learn. Of course, you can find that on Tech Republic. And uh, we really appreciate you watching here today. And hey, Sue, thanks for being with us. Thank you.